I recently had a request to do a tutorial on factory functions in JavaScript. So in this tutorial, we are going to talk about what they are and when you might want to use them. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. To be notified about new tutorials, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. Also, check out the discount links to all my courses that I've included in the description of this tutorial. Now, factory functions are really not mysterious. They are easy to define. A factory function is simply a function that returns an object without using the keyword new. So the end result of the function is the return of an object. Let's look at an example really quick, and then we'll talk about why and when you may want to use them. Now, in order to understand the value of a factory function, I feel you need to understand closure. So if that is not a clear concept for you, I would encourage you to first watch my tutorial on closure. I will link to that in the description. Okay, so let's look at an example. Here's a very simple factory function. I've defined the function. I'm able to pass in a number. And I also have a variable here that defines a number of 100. And then it returns this object right here. And so that object is returned to whatever calls the function. All the object has is a method. It's just a sum method. And what basically what it does is it multiplies the number that was passed in with this number. So nothing super mysterious, but this is a factory function because it returns an object and the keyword new is not required to get that object. So let's see how we would use it. So if I just set up a variable here and I set that equal to invoking the function and I'm going to pass in the number five. And so that's going to return an object here. And then we can access that object. We can use that object like this, that type of thing. All right. So let me go ahead and I'm going to remove that. I'll do that part on the console so we can see what the results are. So I'm going to save that, come back out here, refresh and open up that. And now we can access the object. There's the method of the object, and it returns 500 because we, we passed in the number 5, multiplied that by 100. So there we have a very simple factory function. It turns an object. I did not have to use the keyword new right here when I invoked that function. Now, when would you use this? In JavaScript, we already have a couple of different patterns that can be used to return an object. For example, we can use a JavaScript class or we can use a constructor function and both of those will return an object for us. They require the keyword new, but they return an object. So first off, a factory function have been, has been attractive simply because it is a way to produce an object without diving into the complexities of classes and constructor functions. So that's made them somewhat popular just for that reason. So that is one reason to use them. But why else? Why else would you want to use it? So let me do something here. I want to look at an example of a class and also an example of a constructor. And I want to show you possibly another reason to use a factory function. Now, I've already got one of each of those created right here in this JavaScript file. So here's our class. And by the way, these are very similar, both of these. Here's the constructor down here. Here's the class up here, and they're very similar. So the class, greeting one, we have a constructor inside that, basically takes greet that's passed in, whatever is passed in, places in that variable, and then it sets the object that's returned, it sets the greeting property of the object that is returned to that greet message that is passed in. And then that object will also have this greet method. Okay. Now, similar with the constructor function, the message that is passed in, we're going to set to the object. 
and set that to the greeting property right here. And we're also going to include a greet, a greet method with that object as well. And in both cases, the greet method is just logging to the console what the greeting is. So there we have two patterns for creating objects, the class and the constructor function. So let's set up some objects now. I'm going to do greet1 and set that equal to new greeting1. So I'm going to use the class for this. And the greet I'm going to pass in is hi. So that will put an object into greet1 and then also greet2. And we'll call greeting2 for that one, the constructor function. Whoops. Why did I put parentheses around that? And we'll pass in hello for that. Let me save that and then let's go ahead and refresh this and let's go ahead and take a look at it. So greet one dot greet that method. It returns a high greet two dot greet that returns a hello. So both of those are objects. They both have a method greet on them we're able to access them. So that works great. That creates an object for us. How is this different from a factory function? Well, one thing is with a factory function, we don't have to use the keyword new. Here's another reason it might make a difference. Let me go ahead and change my HTML page here. I'm going to uncomment a button inside of a div tag that I've added. The reason for that is I'm going to be using that button. You can barely see the button there. Okay, I'm going to be using that button and in response to the event of a button click, I want to call one of the methods on one of these objects. Okay, it doesn't matter which one, it's going to show the same results. And so I'm just going to go ahead and set up that event listener. So I'm going to select the button. I'm going to use query selector to do that. I happen to have an ID associated with that called button. So that's how I'm going to select it. Then I'm going to add an event listener. And the event is going to be click. And then what's the callback function? It's going to be invoked when the button is clicked. Well, I want to use one of the methods from one of these objects. Let's just use greet1. So greet1.greet. So we'll pass in that as the callback function. It's a method on one of those objects. Let's save that and let's see what happens. Refresh this. Click on the button. Notice we get undefined. The reason we get undefined is when it tries to invoke this method here, it doesn't evaluate this to be equal to the greet one object. And so therefore, it doesn't find the greeting property, which is what it needs in order to display the greeting. And so that's why we get undefined there. One of those difficulties that we have with this. Now, I'm going to set up a factory function now that will do the same thing and we'll see that it doesn't have that problem because we don't use this as a part of a factory function. So here's my factory function greeting three and we're going to accept a value for greet to be passed in. So there's the function and now in order for this to be a factory function, we want to return an object. So here's the object we're going to return. And I want to greet method. And all we're going to do is log to the console. The greet message that is passed in. So now don't mix these up. This is a method here, property on the object. This is actually the variable that stores the greet message that's passed in. In fact, let me just change that so there's no confusion there. 
I'll make that variable greeting. So this is using closure. We're going to return this object or we could return this object multiple times. It doesn't matter, but every single object we return is going to have access to that variable, to the value of that variable when the object was created. That's closure. It creates closure over that variable, even though that variable is not inside the object. So one of the powerful things about closure, and we can take advantage of it with this factory function and it allows us to have access to that greeting without using the value of this. All right, so now we've got that factory function set up. Let's go ahead and create a third object, greet three, and we set that equal to, we don't have to use the keyword new, greeting three, and let's pass in hello world. So that should be the greeting we receive. All right, now let's change this down here so that we are doing greet three dot greet. And now we shouldn't get undefined. We should get an actual greeting because we're not relying on this. So let's refresh, click the button and see what we get. Hello world. We don't get that same problem. Now, I should mention there are ways to solve this, several different ways to solve this problem without creating a factory function. So I don't mean to say that factory function is the only way to deal with this problem we have with this. There are numerous ways to do that. We can bind this. We can just pass in an anonymous function as the callback and then inside of that anonymous function, we can call the Greek method. So there are a number of different ways to do that. But that is an advantage of the factory function. Okay, now we've seen this factory function here and this initial one as well. In both cases, they took advantage of closure. This one took advantage of closure for the new num variable and the num variable. Neither of those are returned as a part of the object. However, that object has access to them through closure. So a powerful feature and something to definitely use if you plan to use factory functions. Now, before we leave the topic of factory functions, I need to talk about when I wouldn't want to use them. So for me personally, if I want to generate objects and make sure that I'm using prototypes, which I do most of the time, I would rather use one of the other methods instead of a factory function. And the reason for that is it's easier to implement the prototype. And so that's why I would do that. So basically, if you're planning to use a prototype, then you may not want to use a factory function. Now, if prototypes are unfamiliar to you, I'll link to a tutorial on those as well. I've done some tutorials on prototypes that you can watch. So that is a situation where I may not want to use a factory function. And I need to mention that just at the close of this. Now, before we're done, please hit the like button and subscribe. And remember, I've provided discount links to all my courses in the description section and recently released a new course on asynchronous JavaScript, which I'm very happy about. If you'd like to become a patron of this channel, I would appreciate the support. For a certain level of support, you can get access to the code files I use in every tutorial. You can also contribute by visiting my website just to help keep this channel going. You can follow a link for both in the description. Click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release a new tutorial each week, and thanks for watching.